Hi, I'm Donna Jordan from Jordan Fabrics. Today we are going to see an easy method for binding your quilt. The final step is putting the binding on. And this is a step that a lot of people don't enjoy as much. They feel like the quilt is almost done, but they just don't want to put the binding on. So I'm going to show you a quick method for doing the binding. After you have your quilt done, you need to trim off your excess batting and backing. So I use my cutting blade and the clear ruler. So I'm going to line this up just about on the edge here. And you can see the edge of my quilt is not perfectly straight, but I'm gonna make it straight when I cut it here. Now, if you don't wanna use the blade, if you don't like cutting like that, you can just, you can use your scissors. You get a straighter cut if you use the ruler, but feel free to use the scissors. So the quilt is ready to be bound now. Now, I like to cut my binding not on the bias. I like to cut my binding on the crosswise grain of the fabric. I use two and a half inch strips. So I would just cut the strips that I need two and a half inches wide. I've already got it cut here. So I took all my strips and I sewed them together. Now, just for speed, I use a small seam allowance, small stitch length, and trim off your seams so it's about a quarter inch and iron them open. Then take your long strip to your ironing board and use a steam presser, iron it in half. So my raw edges are even, it's ironed in half. I ironed the whole thing. The binding is now ready to be put onto the quilt. So I usually begin the quilt six or eight inches from one corner and I'm gonna leave a little bit of fabric there. I'm not gonna start at the beginning. I'm gonna leave about six inches here. I'm going to sew with a little bit bigger than a quarter inch seam. Not quite three eighths, kind of in the middle there, but I'm gonna match up all my raw edges. So I'm matching the raw edges of the binding with the raw edges of the quilt here. Now you want to just set the binding on there. You don't want to stretch the binding. You don't want to stretch the quilt. You just want them both kind of laying neatly on top of each other. The reason you don't want to stretch the binding is because if you pull this tight, it's going to kind of spring back and make your quilt pull up around the edges. It won't lay very flat. So if you've used a cutting blade and a plastic ruler, you have a nice straight edge to put your binding onto. So you can see this step goes pretty quick. Now when you're getting towards the corner here, I'm gonna take a pin to show you where to stop. We're using about a quarter inch seam. So about a quarter inch from the edge here, that's where we want to stop stitching. So we're going to stitch down here and we're going to stop about a quarter inch from the edge and we're going to back tack right there. So sometimes I will just take my fingernail and make a little line on it. You can use a pencil if you want. So I'm going to go to right to that line and then I'm going to back tack. The back tacking anchors it. Cut off your threads, turn your quilt. Now you want to fold your binding at a 45 degree angle here. Your raw edges are meeting right with this edge here. It's one long continuous edge. Finger press it a little and fold it down so the fold and the raw edge are at the same line. Now when you do this you can feel where it's folded under there. So I want this line that matches up with the sewing line 
and my next sewing line, which is a quarter inch, right where that intersection is, right there, where they meet, right there, is where I'm going to start stitching. So I want to back tack to there and stitch right there. So I can feel it with my fingers, but it's a little hard for you to see on camera. But right along that line and right along the quarter inch line, I want to start sewing right there. So I'm going to put my needle in. I'm going to do a couple stitches back tack. Snip my threads. So we're going to do each corner like that. Again, look and see where you're a quarter inch from the edge. It's about right here. You can draw a little line with your fingernail. Sew to that line. Back tap. Turn your quilt. Fold it 45 degrees, heading right to that corner. Lined up. Fold this even with the edge of that side there. Again, you can draw this with a pencil if you want. See where you're going to start. So I back tacked a little too far there. I might have to pull a little bit of the stitching out. We'll see when we get there. So I find a two and a half inch width works really well for me. We're going to be doing our final stitching on the machine. I'm not going to do it by hand. We make probably 70 or 80 quilts as samples each year. And that just doesn't give me enough time to do the final stitching by hand. But I have a method which looks almost as good. So I slow down as I'm getting to the edge. I'm marking a quarter inch up from the edge of the quilt, quarter inch. So you want to go kind of slow. When you get there, back up. Turn your quilt, fold it at a 45 degree angle. I find it helps if you press it down. Fold that edge even. See where you're going to stitch, start stitching. So for me, it's right there. Right there. That's where I want to start stitching. So I can finger press it there. You can put the needle down there, go forward and back. You want to go slow so you don't back all the way off the edge of the quilt. Snip your threads as you go. It keeps it nice and neat. And we're almost all the way around. Last corner, again, fold it up, do it a pressing, fold it down, all right, now, we're coming to the end here, ah, I see I could have done with one less piece here, so I'm going to stop stitching. I'm going to take it off of the machine and I'm going to snip off this selvage edge there. Now I'm going to just pull this down as if I was stitching. I think if I just take out my seam allowance there it'll be just about right. So I'm just going to take this stitching off and re-stitch it to the other edge. I don't want to have a little teeny piece of binding on there.
All right, now we're just going to stitch this last seam here. And we're going to use a small seam allowance. So we need about a half inch overlap, which is what we've got here. So I'm just simply going to put the two raw edges together and stitch. Now you, you can get less bulk if you do a diagonal seam, but it's trickier. And I've found that this really is pretty darn flat. So if I was doing a quilt for a quilt show, I would probably be cutting the, the binding on the bias. I'd be doing seams on the 45 degree angle, but I'm not, and this will work well enough for my purposes. So open this seam up. It lays flatter with an open seam. Repress it with your fingers right along that there. Now it should lay just about right. See, it's just fitting perfectly on there. If you found that your seam wasn't deep enough and there's too much binding, take the seam out and make it a little bit smaller, but I've got it fitting on there just perfect. So now I'm just gonna stitch this last little bit down. And we'll clean up these threads a little bit. Now, if you wanted to turn this to the back and whip stitch it by hand, you could do that. I'm not going to do that. I'm going to, first I'm going to press it open. And so I'm going to pull it, pull the seam open. And then I'm just running my fingernail down hard along that seam to get it all the way opened up. So I do this all the way around the quilt. If you have a really big quilt, your fingers get tired, you can just do one side at a time. So where you have these seams, there's a little extra bulk, you really want to iron that down. And you can't get all the way into the corner, but you can get close. So again, I'm, I'm pulling it open and then drawing my fingernail down across it hard. Another seam, make that flat. So again, you can use diagonal seams in your binding. It will lay a little flatter. But today we're just trying to do the binding quickly. So that's why I just kept the seam straight and not on the diagonal. All right, so now we're ready to go around the corners here. Ready to turn it to the back. So we are going to turn this to the back of the quilt. And then we are going to stitch in the ditch. That means we're going to stitch right in where these two fabrics come together. We're going to be stitching right there. When, with a two and a half inch piece of binding, when I flip it back there, the back is farther over than the top. So when I stitch it here, it's going to catch the back. So you do want to have this folded right over your top. You don't want to have it, you don't want to have it baggy. You want to have it folded right up against this. Fold all of that to the back. So I'm going to move my light down a little bit closer so I can see in the ditch there. So this is folded to the back. Hold it with your hands. You can pin it if you like. I've just done so many I can tell if it's folded back far enough. And I'm going to stitch right here. So I'm stitching in the ditch, so you really can't see it from the top at all. Now you can see the stitching from the back. So you can see my stitching line near the edge of the binding. If you've sewn it nice and evenly all the way around, your stitching will be an even amount from that um, edge on the back side. So the top 
you really can't even tell that it's stitched in the ditch because it just gets almost invisible. So we're going to keep folding to the back and stitching all the way around. So I'm going to use coordinating thread every time. So on the top of my machine, I'm going to match a thread to the border fabric. And on the back, I'm going to match it to the binding color. So you may be using two different colors of thread. We're coming to the corner. So let's see how neat my corner is. So on the corner, we're folding this on the back side and then we're going to be folding this towards the back and what we want is for that to be at a 45 degree angle. Once in a while you've got to take a pin and just help you pull it a little bit there. So that's what we want it to look like on the back. Hopefully that's what it'll look like on the top. Now here is where a couple of pins might be useful. So that's a nice, that's the look we want. 45 degrees there with these meeting and same thing on the other side. So you've got to pull those pins out before you sew. So I'm going to take them out right now. And I'm going to slow down as I get to the corner, pull the pin out. Leave your needle down when you get to the very, very, very corner. Make sure you've got enough of this folded to the back side before you spin around and then just pivot. Then just continue on. Keep turning to the back. So it's a pretty quick method. This part especially is very quick compared to stitching it by hand. There's other ways for getting those corners real neat. You can do one side at a time. So here's an alternate method. Turn it to the back, leave that at the 45 degree angle there, and just stitch to the end and back tack. So you can just do one side individually. So I'm going to go to the end and back tack. Then I'm going to take it off of the machine, turn it. Now I'm going to turn this side to the back. So you can do it in two separate steps if you like. It's sometimes a little bit harder to keep that side back there using this method, but you know the front side was really, I mean the first side was really on there perfect. So that's the look we're going for in the corners, is to have that fold right at 45 degrees. Now mine don't always come out exactly perfect. They're always on there securely, but I don't always get the perfect angle. That one came out pretty nice. So stitching in the ditch takes a little practice, but if you... If you've ironed it nice and open, you'll be right in the ditch. You, you won't have any trouble there. And I've found on binding, if you're near the ditch, it's usually good enough. It'll still be on there securely. But the closer you are to right in the ditch, the more invisible that stitching will be. We're coming to another corner. So again, we, what we want to do is be turning this back. It's about a half inch. That means that 
right here, you're at a 45 degree angle. Then when you turn this side back, you're going to get that nice angle right there. Now I've got a little bit too much back there, so I'm going to unfold this just a little so that it meets there so I've got my nice angle. And again, pin it if you like. I'm a little bit used to just holding it myself. Okay. Turn enough back here so that when you grab it, it stays folded neatly to the back when you turn. Now, right there, I was a little bit on top of my binding rather than in the ditch. So right here, if you look closely, I should take that stitching out and restitch it in the ditch, but it's not real prominent, so that's a matter of how picky you are. And this corner isn't as neat as it ought to be, so I really should take this whole thing out and fold that a little bit better. But as you can see, even if you don't, it's securely on there. It just doesn't look as nice. But it's not going to come apart. So if you're in a hurry and that baby shower is in an hour, you might want to just leave it. Let's see if we can do this corner a little bit neater. I'm going to do this one at a time. So I'm folding it right along the edge, 45 degree angle there. We're going to go right to where the binding stops and back tack. Then we're going to turn it and fold this back. Nice neat fold there. Start sewing with our needle right in the corner. Back tack a little and we're right to the end of the quilt now. So we're just going to do this last little bit. Trim our threads and give it a quality check. So that corner came out very nice. So using this method, because we couldn't see the back as we were sewing, we have to flip it over and make sure the binding is caught everywhere. When I first did this method, I would frequently be so close to the edge that it would not actually be caught. So I'm always gonna flip it over and I'm gonna go all the way around the edge and make sure that it's stitched on everywhere. And it looks like all those sides look good. Stitched on everywhere there. You can see here it's slightly close to the edge. There's not much of a seam allowance, but it's, it's, it's all the way on the binding. That will not come out. Okay, the quilt is all done now. I usually give it a slight steam press right along the edge to make the binding lay flat, but you can see here, hanging nice and neat. So there you go. Quick way to finish your quilt. If you like this video, give it a thumbs up and subscribe to our YouTube channel.